South Korean scientists claim to have developed the first room temperature superconductor. A team of South Korean scientists has announced the development of a superconductor that works at room temperature and ambient pressure. If their claims stand up to independent scrutiny, it could spell a technological revolution. We all know that there are losses when transmitting electricity. They result from the resistance in the wires. However, there are materials that conduct electricity without resistance, i.e. superconductors. They allow the transmission of energy without any losses. The world of science has long known and used many superconductors. However, there is a serious problem with them. Superconductors only work at very low temperatures down to minus several hundred degrees Celsius. Now, scientists in South Korea have announced the development of a superconductor operating at temperatures and pressures close to room conditions. Superconductors transmit electricity without resistance and have a number of magnetic properties that make them invaluable in technological applications. The publication on this subject has appeared in the archive pre-print database and still needs to undergo a review process. However, if the claims of South Korean researchers turn out to be true and the results of their research are repeated, then this material can dramatically reduce energy losses. Are we on the brink of a technological revolution involving finding a material that exhibits superconducting properties at room temperature? Maybe. The material developed by scientists from South Korea may turn out to be a revolutionary invention, but first the scientists' work must undergo a review process. From time to time there is information about the development of room temperature superconductors, but apart from the media hype, nothing else happens. Therefore, rigorous and independent verification is necessary. The scientific community must replicate the experiments and results to confirm the reproducibility and reliability of the research. The search for such a material has been going on for decades. Some research teams have achieved interesting results in this field. For example, researchers from the University of Rochester have developed a superconductor that operates at a temperature of 14.4 degrees Celsius. Unfortunately, the material exhibits superconducting properties at the gigantic pressure of about 27,000 MPa, 39 million psi. More on this in the text. The material created by the South Korean band was named LK99. It was created by mixing powdered compounds containing lead, oxygen, sulfur and phosphorus. The researchers then heated them at high temperatures for several hours. This caused the powders to chemically react and turn into a dark grey solid. One of the key aspects of superconductivity is the critical temperature below which the electrical resistance drops to zero and the material becomes a superconductor. The given value for LK99 is as much as 127 degrees Celsius. This means that the material could be used in all environments on Earth. First discovered in 1911, superconductivity gives materials two key properties. The lack of resistance, resistance, to conduct electricity and the decay, 
pushing of the electromagnetic field in the superconductor called the Meissner effect. The Meissner effect allows the material to levitate. The team recorded the critical current in the developed material, i.e. the value of the electric current flowing through the superconductor at which electrical resistance appears. No electrical resistance, critical magnetic field, and the Meissner effect. These properties led the team to conclude that LK99 is indeed a superconductor. All of our findings lead to LK99 being the first superconductor to operate at room temperature and ambient pressure. The LK99 has many possibilities for various applications, such as magnets, motors, cables, magnetic levitation technology in high-speed trains, antennas, etc. It will also find application in quantum computing. We believe that our research will turn out to be a historic event that will open a new era for humanity, the scientists wrote in the publication. Speaking of potential applications, superconductors will primarily be used in the power industry, where they can reduce energy losses caused by resistance in wires, estimated at up to 200 million megawatt hours. Thanks to this type of materials, it will also be possible to develop new devices used in medicine, such as imaging devices or magnetocardiography. Superconductors will also be used in electronics and the development of state-of-the-art data storage technologies. Moreover, superconducting materials could also be used in energy storage devices creating highly efficient and compact solutions. But there are certainly more applications for superconductors. New research reveals oldest Denisovan remains to date. New analyzes of material excavated from Denisova cave have identified the oldest ever remains of the Denisovans, an extinct, mysterious group of harmonins believed to be closely related to modern humans, dated to around 200,000. Bone fragments have been found in a layer of sediment that also contains animal remains and stone tools giving a glimpse into the way of life of our long-extinct ancestors. Denisov Cave in the Altai Mountains of southern Siberia gained fame 11 years ago when genetic sequencing of a fossil little finger bone revealed a new, previously unknown group of the genus Homo. Representatives of this group were called Denisovans, after the place where their remains were first discovered. Further research in the cave brought more discoveries. Found e.g. several teeth belonging to representatives of this group. However, cave work is difficult. The remains of our extinct relatives are fragmentary and mixed with thousands of animal bones. Now, an international team of scientists from the Universities of Vienna and Tübingen and the Max Planck Society have identified five bone fragments from the Denisova cave. Studies have shown that three of them belong to the Denisovans and one to the Neanderthal. The remains of our ancestors are about 200,000 years old. Years and stone tools or petrified remains of food were found with them. These finds shed new light on the adaptive strategies of these early harmonins as the groups spread across Eurasia. The results of the analyzes were published in the journal Nature Ecology and Evolution. 
A team of scientists led by Katerina Duca of the University of Vienna's Department of Evolutionary Anthropology worked for four years to isolate and analyze ancient proteins and DNA from nearly 4,000 bone fragments from the Denisov cave. Their new findings provide solid information about the ancient inhabitants of the cave. Using an analytical method using mass spectrometry, the team focused on the oldest layers in Denisova cave, which date back to 200,000 years ago. Years. The remains found in these layers are too fragmented and damaged to use standard methods of identification. In addition, Animal bones predominate in the cave and it is difficult to isolate the remains of interest to scientists from this mess. Samantha Brown of the University of Tübingen analyzed 3,800 bone fragments no more than 4 cm long, previously thought impossible to identify. But she made it. Brown identified five bones whose collagen matched the human peptide profile. Finding one bone from our ancestors would be nice, but five. It exceeded my wildest expectations, says Brown. We were stunned to discover bone fragments that had preserved biomolecules from such ancient layers intact, adds Duca of the five newly identified bones. Four contained enough genetic material to allow scientists to reconstruct their mitochondrial DNA. Three of them matched the Denisovans and one matched the Neanderthal. Dated to 200,000 Denisovan bones are among the oldest fossils of the genus Homo ever genetically sequenced. The few Denisovan remains found so far are from 122,000 to 194,000 years old. Years. The new findings provide a bit more information about the Denisovans. They appeared in Denisova cave during the interglacial period and took advantage of its strategic location. They used raw materials found in the sediments of the nearby Anuj River and hunted herbivores such as bison, roe deer and red deer, gazelles and dry grasshoppers, and even woolly rhinos. According to researchers, they have maintained a similar lifestyle for several thousand years. About 130 minus 150,000 years ago, Neanderthals appeared in the cave, represented by the remains also discovered as part of this research. The presence of stone tools in the same sediment layer is the first direct evidence that Denisovans made and used tools. Based on the shape of these artifacts and the fact that they were covered with fat residue, the study authors suggest that they were probably used to treat the skins of hunted animals. Research in Denisova cave continues. Scientists systematically comb the area and the found remains and artifacts are subjected to detailed analysis, in which Russian archaeologists also participate. Denisova Cave remains the only site known to us that contains evidence of the periodic presence of all three major groups of harmonins, Denisovans, Neanderthals and modern humans. Previous studies have shown that Denisovans have inhabited parts of Asia for about 300,000 years. Up to 50,000 years ago, they were more closely related to Neanderthals than they are to Homo sapiens, and both are the closest extinct relatives of living humans today. It is believed that another 40,000 years ago, these two groups of harmonins inhabited Eurasia, the Neanderthals in the west and the Denisovans in the east. Their evolutionary paths diverged much earlier, 
some 350,000 years ago. Years ago. The analyzers also showed that the Denisovans interbred with both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, and thus the genes of both extinct species are found in modern man, particularly among Southeast Asians. The genetic heritage of the Denisovans makes up a larger proportion of the genome than the genetic traces left by Neanderthals in modern humans.